ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kurt. Welcome back to Farlands or Bust. This is episode 724. Hello, Wolfie. Woof. Episode 724 of Farlands or Bust for your Thursday. Yet another Thursday. This time, Thursday, January 10th. <laughs> January is a difficult, almost as difficult as February is a difficult month to pronounce. But we're pronouncing it anyway, and we're continuing walking to the Far Lands here in Minecraft Beta 1.7.3. Gotta be careful through here, it's, it's a bit cactusy, and Wolfie is a bit of a noodle who often will just plant face first into cacti. But yeah, Thursday, January 10th, 2019. Whoa! Farlandsbus.com is where you can learn more about the series, but also donate to the charity fundraiser we're holding this season. Raising money for direct relief charity up to $23,029.58. Thank you everybody who continues to donate. It's much appreciated. Getting us closer to our goals. Uh, I've said before, I'll have to... Oh, that was quite the leaping, leaping attack there, Wolfie. Uh, I'll have to... Uh, I don't have to, but I, I'd like to reconsider this season's goal. It's been... Yeah, it's been a long time, hasn't it? It's been over a year, hasn't it? Since, since the last... Well, we had a flubathon, then I started season seven without a charity, and then started season seven point five. <laughs> I don't know whatever this is with direct relief as a charity. So it's been a while. I, I don't know. It, it's it's it, it it might have to. I've discussed this before. It might have to simply be an annual thing instead of a let's reach the goal and then do flubathon. Like maybe flubathon could be part of reaching the goal, right? Because obviously, usually you raise more money during a, a live stream event like that. But also, you know, maybe that's just not, not, it's the focus. It's certainly the focus, but it's, it's, it's not quite the same, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? linear progress that perhaps we can have expected in the past which is totally fine like i'm not faulting faulting the the the, the money for charity it's already like i said twenty three thousand dollars for this little old series ran by little old one person me with a very dedicated community and and people who are joining us still in the comments finding out about us we got another full page spread in the uh, 2018 edition of the Guinness World Records so a lot of people finding me there and joining our channel from there perhaps they don't know about the charity or know what's up know about the jitters and whatever so I, I, I fully understand that sort of thing and uh, just certain certain things worth considering. You know, other things I've been considering that I've been getting a lot of questions about, and I'm going to answer them here, and and a, a, another major percentage of people are, are not going to view this or hear this and, and miss it, but st streaming on over on the twitch.tv slash KurtJMac, I came up with a, an idea, a theme, if you could call it that. Hold on, I'm gonna dig my way down here. Maybe it'll be safer. I'm just gallivanting about. Well, there goes my shovel. So, ah, okay, I guess I'm going down. Wolfie! <laughs> Wolfie pushed me while I was in my inventory. What a noodle. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it's not, it's not, I'm not, it's not a big declaration or an organized thing, but I thought it would be interesting just to see, to see if this is a thing I could do. Play 365 video games throughout the year of 2019. Kind of inspired by 
folks doing like the stream a day thing, like CoStar obviously has been doing for over five years. Uh, Fedrin, uh, over a year ago, has, has done something similar. I don't, I haven't, and I'm not going to stream every single day, but I thought it would be interesting to stream like a video game per day. And we've already started that, sort of. I'm not, I haven't made any artwork or made any FAQs or websites or big declarations or anything like that, but I, I do keep, much like we get people here in the Farlands or Bus Chat asking, why is it jittering so much? How long, how much longer? Press F3. Um, I, I keep getting folks in my Twitch chat asking questions about it. So I'm hoping some of some of those questions are are, are uh, answered here. But yeah, I just thought it would be a good idea. And and like we've already played a seven, seven games and it's the ninth right now as I'm recording this. So kind of on schedule. We played three games in one day. We, I found a bunch of little top down racing video games. And it's just, it's kind of inspired by throughout well, the latter half of 2018, that means the last half, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> of 2018, partly due to the Twitch bounties program, but just other things. We just started trying games that we might not have otherwise tried. Played games like Assassin's Creed and Crew, The Crew 2, uh, and then, you know, found or were given keys to games and we played things like the 303 Squadron, the the, the mushroom picking simulator, delicacies, and like they don't have to be completely new games or or games that we are forced we, we we know we will like, but we still are able to have fun with them with what little time we spend with them. And I figured, I think that fits my that fits my brand that fits my my style of streaming also i it was i people enjoyed it and got a lot of viewers but i did get stuck in a in a no man's sky wormhole let's call it for a few months last year where that was all i was streaming and that was i feel like some good streams and good content uh but also i kind of want to try to avoid getting trapped in scenarios like that uh, again. And, and also, it, you know, that almost came out of a, a necessity for the fact that I couldn't find or think of other games to play. Uh, so this trying to play 365 games is no excuse <laughs> because, oh, it, find games to play. We Let's play something we've never played or let's play something that I wouldn't have played. We'll give it an hour. If it lasts longer than that, then that means we're having a good time. And if not, all right, next game. So those are my thoughts. It's not anything formal yet. It might come time in in March or April, uh, and we're you know 60, 80 games in, and and I realize I'm completely out of games to play. At which point it'll be like, well, that was an experiment. Uh, it might come to December, and we're at 300 games. So we, we push and try to play like four games a day to, to make it to the end. I don't know. It's, it's just something I feel like at least this first week has been kind of a helpful, almost a less of a burden to have to find a game to play on Twitch or dedicate myself like, oh, I'm going to play a... Um, well, I don't know, like a like a Witcher game or, or, or an RPG or something. People are gonna expect me to play it through. I can't not stop playing this now. It's it's kind of an out, like, okay, we played this. It's not for me though. And it exists. And add it to the lists. Speaking of lists, does anybody know how to like I'm I'm keeping track of these things in a Google spreadsheet? Could I is there a way I can make that spreadsheet public? without also making it public, the, the Google account it is created from? Because I don't want that to be public. Is that a, is there, is there like a, a anonymous publishing? Se secrets, Kurt secrets. 
So that's that's my idea. But yeah, I'm basically like keeping list of the games we played, what day we played them, and I'm linking to the uh, highlight VOD and a link to the actual game on Steam or, or, or through my humble bundle link. Uh, I think would be would be neat and just an interesting way to keep track in case anybody's wondering what was that game Kurt played a couple weeks ago. I think that would be helpful. But yeah, that's what I'm doing with Twitch. If you've not joined us on Twitch, um, now would be the time because it's not like you're going to join in the middle of a game and be lost. Uh, we're, just, we're trying them all. And uh, I'm also going to sleep so we can continue in the morning. <laughs> And awakeness. Whoop. That's right, Wolfie. Awakeness. And it's even not not even like new games. Or even new games to me. Like the other day we played Wreckfest with Cone, because it was Cone's birthday on Monday. So I joined him in Wreckfest. That's a game. That is a game that was played in 2019. Added to the list. I I I'm I, I'm done with No Man's Sky. Uh, and I'm not counting Carnistic, because we rang in the New Year's with 12 hours of that, and we end every stream with it. Um, but, like, I'm sure eventually... This is not being recorded on Twitch, by the way. This is a this is, this is a private recording, just for you and me. So, but whenever I do play Minecraft, probably for Far Lands or Bust, on Twitch, add it to the list. Maybe I want to play the Hellblade again, add it to the list. I, I'm not... I'm, I'm obviously going to want to play Astroneer when it becomes fully released, and I might actually play that multiple days in a row, but we could probably play a few hours of Astroneer and then toss in a, a, a random other game to try out at the end, uh, which I think is, is, is kind of a nice way to make sure we don't burn ourselves out on, on Astroneer or any other game that we might end up liking and, and playing. So that's my idea. That's that's my idea. It, it It is still just an idea. It is not contractually obligated. I just want to make sure. People keep coming into my uh, my streams and asking, is, do, do console games count? Uh, do, does this count? Do sequels to games count? Um, you know, uh, how long do you have to play it before it counts? I can... can you know, those itch.io little walking simulator games count? Yes. And video games. <laughs> video games. If you can consider it a unique video game, then yes, by all means. I, and I'm not really attaching too many rules and stipulations to it. You know, I mean, I guess there's some rules and stipulations here to Far Lands or Bust. No, you know, vanilla. It's a, not a vanilla texture pack, but pretty vanilla. No teleporting, no nether. Just walking, everything's recorded and posted. Walking a dog, <laughs> sleeping through the night. You know, I'm not. It, those are the, the the loose rules I'm keeping myself to. But I'm not. You know, the Guinness World Records aren't looking over my shoulder. Nobody's nobody's holding me to certain things, and it's even looser with whatever this. 365 games thing. I'm trying. We're just trying. We're seeing. We're seeing where it goes. In deeds. That uh, NASA social I mentioned did not go, as I previously mentioned in the last episode. Finally got official confirmation via email that it was postponed, although I'm fairly confident cancelled would be the word. The reason that the, the the NASA SOFIA aircraft telescope was going to be in Seattle was for this, uh, ooh, what is it called? A, I think it's AAS, uh, uh, something Astronomical Society meeting, which is like a big professional, like professors of universities and those scientists doing actual studies and publishing papers and findings. It's that kind of like academic conference is here in Seattle and NASA's SOFIA was going to be here 
as part of NASA's presence at the uh, Astronomical Society conference. Due to the government shutdown, NASA does not have a presence, and neither does Sophia. So they were just figuring, oh, we're in town, and we're doing tours for the Astronomical Society conference. Let's do a NASA social. So I don't think they're just going to plan to come. They might. I could be wrong. Like I said, they might need to come here because it's a Boeing, and, and that's Boeing Field. Maybe they need some 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 checkups. <laughs> Maybe they need to go in for an oil change and a tire rotation. I don't know. Um, but I doubt that they would make a special trip and schedule solely for a NASA social with I don't it's, it was a small one too, 20, maybe 30 attendees at most. So that's a bummer. I was looking forward to that. But hopefully we're still on their list and maybe there will be a another NASA social in the near future that we can step in line, we could cut right in front of the line for or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, there's that. There is that. Let's see, we got a few questions and donations in over the past week. Horsey asks, what do you fantasize about? Interpret this question however you like, colon, capital P. Wouldn't you like to know? Hmm? Um... <laughs> I don't... It's much like I was talking about at the end of the year. I don't have... aspirations. <laughs> How sad is that? No, like, I don't have, like, dreams. Or, like, goals, I suppose, it, it fantasize, like, what are the things you think about that will never happen? Going to space, walking on the moon. I have quite, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Thoroughly, uh, wholly and completely ruled those sorts of things out as possibilities in my lifetime. Maybe if you caught me like five or ten years ago, you might have... I might have had a... Well, more like maybe ten years ago, let's call it. I, I might have uh, had a different opinion. I might have thought, no, I can, I can turn my life around. I can go back to school and get a different type of agree. I can agree and agree. And uh, I can end up in, in the sort of scenario that would find me Possibly studying either planetary geology or whatever other sort of thing that would be required, and I could end up going to space. But uh, that uh, that 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 meatball has 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 left the spaghetti. <laughs> um, murder! Get him, Wolfie. Got him. Yep. Uh, so I suppose that that's like a fantasy. I guess owning other cars, cool cars, having a having a garage to hold them in. <laughs> um, I guess even like the simple the simpler things, like I don't know, finding like a perfect home, like not like off the grid or being a crazy mountain man not that all mountain mans are crazy they kind of are no uh <laughs> but like it'd be cool to, to 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 live with nature around nature in like a barn not in a barn but like a house barn with a barn full of cars be with some land some freedom to stretch out it would be really nice, and I've talked about this on stream, that my, my lease is coming up here in March, end of February. I'm just kind of waiting on if they're going to raise the rent, then I might need to consider moving, because it's already at kind of the peak of what I should and can afford. And if I do, there are places like that that I could move to. 
or even just a place with like a view of the mountains. I don't have a view of, of any mountains from my house or patios or decks or anything. Whenever I do see the mountains, whenever it's not cloudy and raining, and I do see the mountains either while I'm driving or I can see them across the water if I go to the waterfront. I'm not, I can't say that it like, ooh, it takes my breath away and I'm in complete awe of the size of the universe. But there is a little bit of like a, huh, sort of, it, it's almost, it, it, it affects that day versus other days where I might just stay inside or where I can't see them because it's raining or, or whatever. It does affect perception, I suppose, on a, on a, on a, on a micro, tiny little scale that I can kind of, you kind of notice that in communities too. I noticed that about like in Colorado and Denver, just the, mostly not, it's not a hundred percent rule, but the way life is there and perhaps it affects me more than the other people. And that's just my perspective on the other people, but it, it, it's almost a, a humble, humbleness, humble bundle. <laughs> uh, Similarly, sometimes, kind of, Arizona was a little bit different, but just the big skies of Arizona and the mountains on the horizon of Arizona uh, and Phoenix and stuff like that. Uh, Portland, the whole state of Oregon, they all drive at or below the speed limit. It's like there's something, something, something interesting going on there. And you can almost see it on the days here in Seattle when the mountain, uh, Mount Rainier, is out and they're most of the highways, but in particular, there's a few highways. If you're on and a current, a certain bend after a bend, it's like right over in the direction of where you're driving. And it's kind of, uh, I don't know. I feel like that would, maybe it wouldn't, but I feel like that would make a, maybe not a difference, but it would change something waking up every day and being able to be like, oh, okay, out my window, or let's sit down and have our coffee and watch, look at the mountains. Look at the beautiful mountains. Look at that moon. Let's go to sleep and continue in the morning. <laughs> speaking of the moonness, speaking of the moonness, on the 20th, I believe, the 20th of January. <laughs> on the 20th of January, there is a lunar eclipse. It's the blood wolf moon or whatever media is calling it, but there was a, a partial solar eclipse across China and, and, and Asia, I believe. And whenever there's a solar eclipse, partial or full or whatever, there is a lunar eclipse just because the geometry is right. And I do believe this lunar eclipse is over or visible from all of, if not most of North America. I've not looked it up. Specifically, I just saw some, some recent postings about it. But if you do have clear skies on the night of January 20th, there will be a lunar eclipse where the Earth's shadow passes over the moon, turns it a red color over the, the course of a few hours, and then passes back over. I, I would highly doubt that I here in Seattle would have clear skies, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be keeping track of that. I figured I'd just mention that in case folks haven't heard of it. But yeah, I'm not, I, I can't, I, I, I need to look up like the specific times. Of course, that's all dependent on time zones and your location and things like that. But yeah, a lunar eclipse, neat stuff indeed. Let's see, Bart with donations had a few questions here. Bart asked, <laughs> that was my impression of Homer yelling Bart. What is your favorite, what is your favorite question? What is your least? Well, this is the worst right here. <laughs> this is the least, you're looking at it because there's no context whatsoever. I think it, it's just, those are tough for me because I, it, it I find them to be too absolute. You, I mean, you might want to ask, like, right now, if you had to have candy bar, drink, meal, food, uh, whatever, instead of saying, what is my favorite? 
I feel like is too like this is the one the top of all time and I will never change my mind for this sort of thing and if you do catch me changing my mind you will call me out for it well I thought you said your favorite thing was this but um yeah like like favorite foods favorite whatever uh music band song any a movie a any of those things are very tough for me I know what I like but I, I I I can never pick the one top thing. I guess is a, is a different, and that's on me. I'm I'm very bad at making choices. <laughs> I'm, I'm not the greatest at uh, whether or not it be where where to go, what to eat, things to do, games to play. Obviously, as we just kind of mentioned. <laughs> um, so yeah, to, to be able to proclaim my top this, that, or the other of all time. Ooh, I need uh, planks. I should get those after using them all to make these boats. And there's no trees here. So hopefully where we land, there will be... Well, there's a bunch of trees right there, but we got plenty of time. Um, Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 my thought on the what's your favorite questions. They're kind of, they're not I mean, I don't want to call them lazy questions, but they're easy questions to ask. Especially if it's like one they're commonly one word answers, right? There's no it's hard to follow up or have an entire conversation about like what do you fantasize about? That's a very open-ended question. I could have taken it in, in other directions. I didn't, because this is a family show, I'd say and declare. But, uh... Yeah, those are, those, are, those are rough to answer. What meal can you say... What meal can you make that you're most proud of, is Bart's other question. This is almost... A favorite question. <laughs> this is a this is a one word answer and a decision to make that I'm not good at making. Uh, I don't think I'm particularly have any sort of expertise at making any one thing. I make stuff that's good, but like, I, I don't have, like, it's all, like, oh, tacos, or this, that, or the other. I don't have a meal. And I really haven't been cooking much lately. I'd like to, but it's also, <laughs> there's that whole decision thing. And how to, how to make that decision. It's also, I don't, I, it's, hmm. I, I suppose I should do the actual math on this, but it almost, it feels expensive for me as, as one whole person to cook meals. Because, like, I'm just, like, in comparison to, say, the, the $10 freshly meal plan or whatever. Because, okay... Like, I have to buy chicken, and that's whatever it's going to be, four ninety nine a pound. So I, I buy chicken, but then I got to buy two different types of peppers, and those are like two bucks each. And then I got to buy an onion, and that's like 99 cents. And then I got to buy rice, and maybe I, maybe a bag of rice. I don't know how much a bag of rice is. What is it? 25 bucks? No. <laughs> well, how big a bag of rice are you buying, Kurt? No, I don't know. Four bucks? Three bucks? Okay, maybe I use 50 cents out of the four dollar bag of rice. And I think just adding all that up ends up being more per meal than like a, a meal predetermined. This is your meal in a, in a box. For ten dollars, I could be wrong, and I'm sure there's there's various variables. <laughs> it's it's a game of variance. But yeah, I just for one, I could see it being definitely more obviously uh, uh, efficient for more than one person. 
I'm also not too great at, like, making a bunch and then, like, saving it for later. Meal planning, as it were. I did do that. I made some curry. Like, I basically... I had chicken and a few veggies and, and potatoes, and I bought just a pre-mixed curry sauce that you stir-fry it all in there with, and then rice. And I had a little bit left over that I froze. It wasn't as good bringing it back to life after freezing it. And I don't think I'll be doing that again. So yeah, I don't I hmm. I could be I'm I'm probably very wrong. I don't I don't also I don't like do I I mean I if I'm at the supermarket and I'm comparing X versus Y brand of whatever I'm looking at, I'll, I'll end up buying the cheaper one or the one that's on sale. But I don't, like, clip coupons. I don't look through the weekly ads to see, oh, well, this is on sale now, then then by all means I'm going to be eating this because it's on sale. Uh, I, I, I don't do that. It feels like a lot of extra energy. Too many more decisions to make on top of the already difficult decisions for my my meager little brain to make. So yeah, when it comes to cooking, <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. Um, breakfast. I, I think I appreciate making breakfast more than dinner or whatever. So like making a good scrambled eggs or, or making a good omelet or making a good stack of pancakes feels like more of an accomplishment than, you know, making, a, I don't know, a stir fry or a, 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 a spaghetti pasta dish uh, or whatever. It, it feels more, there's more enjoyment in the breakfast. Perhaps it's all the sugar <laughs> in, and, and butter and, and grease and bacon fat that elicits that response, but yeah. Thanks for those donations and questions, Bart. I hope you appreciate the fact that I didn't answer either of them. <laughs> uh, ooh, look at that. It's a tectonic fault line. Uplift and whatever. <laughs> you know, Geology. Uh, speaking of geology here, let's dig into the geology. Perhaps away from those zombie noises. Uh, perhaps a little further away from those zombie noises. Um, this all looks like caves. Yeah, it is. That's that's unfortunate. Ooh, how about this? It's like a pre-built house. A house for a mouse. I am the mouse in this scenario. <laughs> well done. Oh, man. But yeah, thank you very much, everybody, for watching and or listening, if you're listening on the podcast, to episode 724 of Far Lands or Bust. Much appreciated indeed. If you if you would like to donate to Direct Relief, that's over at farlandsorbust.com. It'll take you through the uh, Tiltify website to do that donation and that'd be much appreciated get your questions in as well as as you can tell I I, I I require no I I depend on those questions to have topics and what not to talk about this is a long journey it's a very very long journey indeed we're, we're gonna need we're gonna need some conversation pieces oh what I didn't, I'm whoops oh geez I'm making boats I, I meant to make beds there we go And, uh, yeah, if watching somebody try rather unenthusiastically and, and uncommittally to play 365 games over the course of 2019, there's always my Twitch channel, too. You can check that out if you haven't already. Hop in the sub tub, enjoy the chat and whatnot. It's a good, it's a good crew we got over there. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, much appreciated indeed. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kurt. I will see you next time
There is that.